Good morning to you. God bless you and welcome, welcome. My name is Benita and I just want to welcome you to another teaching on Unshackled from Depression. You know, I was listening to this beautiful music. You call this soaking worship music. This is the kind of music that is so soothing for you. I want to encourage you as you begin to go on your journey that you spend time just time worshiping or listening to worship music. You'll be surprised how that will water your spirit and end up really strengthening your soul. Amen. Amen. Well, today we're going to be talking about a caterpillar with butterfly wings. <laughs> a caterpillar with butterfly wings. You know, when we think about how beautiful a butterfly is and its gracefulness and its just meticulous beauty, you know, um, we would never think that it actually came from a caterpillar. When I looked up the definition for a caterpillar, I found out that a caterpillar, as far as the dictionary is concerned, is the larva of a butterfly or moth. And it has segmented worm-like body with three parts um, of true legs and several pairs of appendages similar to legs, but it's the larva of a butterfly or moth. What is a larva? Well, a larva, according to definition, is a distinct juvenile, listen to that word, a distinct juvenile or young form that many animals undergo before they metamorphose into adults. It's a juvenile. It's an immature stage. I thought that was absolutely awesome. As I began to prepare for this lesson, I could see that there was no way that I was going to be able to do it <laughs> all at once. So today I'm just going to introduce a three-part lesson called A Caterpillar with Butterfly Wings. When we talk about that, when we think about that, I mean, it's really a travesty almost um, to think about a caterpillar that is on the ground that can be smushed so easily that has to crawl up the tree and has to spin itself um, into a cocoon. Um, but then when we think about what comes out from the cocoon is a beautiful butterfly. And we think that term of that process is called a metamorphosis. Did you know that that word metamorphosis is the same Greek word that is used in the scripture in Romans 12 and 2. The scripture says, For us to be not conformed to this world, to do not practice how the world is in their thinking, in their mindset, in their behavior, to be not conformed to this world, but to be transformed or metamorphosized by the renewing of your mind, amen, that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Another rendering is that don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform or metamorphosize you into a new person by changing the way you think. There we go again, talking about thinking talking about a perspective that God wants to change the way we think in the conversion process, in our salvation, in our living out a transformative life after we've given our lives to God through Jesus Christ. God is changing the way we think. Amen. See, this world system gave us a rule book. <laughs> We grew up believing and latching on to and trying to follow the rule book of this life. 
this world told us that at a certain age, you had to have certain um, accomplishments, that you should be making certain money, you should be looking a certain way, that that's what defined beauty. This world told us how you should feel, how your relationship should look, how it told us, gave us a formula for everything. Amen. And the thing of it is that what happens, the struggle for us as believers is after we say yes to God and God begins this metamorphosis of how we think, this is when the enemy many times will offer us to move into depression because the things that we thought uh, or ways that we thought our lives should look according to the world's standards, it's not there. Maybe we didn't have that ideal Barbie Ken relationship that we thought we were going to have. Maybe we ended up with no money. Maybe we ended up struggling financially when we thought that we wouldn't. It just wasn't the way we thought that it would be according to the world's standards. And the problem is for us is that when we do not release the world standards and allow God to change the way we think, change the way we perceive matters, then we are candidates to move into not only accommodating depression, but also breeding depression. When you breed something, you mate with it. You have communion with it, and then you create an offspring. And a lot of times, depression is progressive. In other words, words, it becomes deeper and deeper and deeper. And the reason that it does that is because we don't separate ourselves from what the enemy is telling us. So if my mind, if even if I'm in the kingdom of God, I've given my life to, to God through Jesus Christ, but I'm still trying to use the world to dictate to me how my life should look, how trials should look how relationships should look. If I'm still trying to um, balance both the world of being like the world and trying to do what they say, because the world has some real stringent rules. And we're going to find out about that, not in this teaching, but later on, um, how the world will tell you uh, when you're supposed to get married and, and tell you um, how your relationship is supposed to be. And the world will tell you how many kids you're supposed to have. And you, if, if you be, need to have a boy, if you need to have a girl, tell you what, what beauty looks like. This world is crazy. And then it flips. I was sharing with someone when I grew up, when I was in junior high school um I was trying to get rid of my hips <laughs> believe it or not ladies the same things that women are um are paying money for to get injections in their hips amen I was trying to get rid of it I used to knock my um uh, bang my my um hip area and my um um, behind area against a cement wall so that it could get smaller. I used to wear trash cans, plastic trash cans on my body and go out and run so that I could get rid of my hips. I was trying to get rid of my hips and now people paying for hips. <laughs> the world at that time made it made me feel as if it wasn't a popular thing. It wasn't the thing to have uh, big hips. And so what am I saying to you is that however God created me a certain way. And so what God wants to do with us is through our relationship with him is for us to become comfortable in our own skin. Amen. God does, doesn't want us to think that our self-worth is predicated on how much money we have and how many, how, if we have a husband or a boyfriend or a boo. God wants us to know who we are without anything external and to know that you are okay. But the world that we live in is screaming at us. 
and telling us what it looks like. Well, I don't own my own house. And so now I got to try to own my own house, even though you may not make enough money and you may not. You, so you're just in a constant um, uh, state of just confusion. A lot of people, even around this time, start saying, I don't have money to buy Christmas gifts. And what am I going to get him for Christmas? What am I going to get her for Christmas? Completely out of um, thinking about the, um, the, the um, purpose of this season. Just this world has just has too much control over how we have, how we think. And we look like a caterpillar, <laughs> a caterpillar attached to the world with butterfly wings. God lives on the inside of us. Amen. And so what has happened is that when we do that, when we're still striving to try to um, follow the world standards, try to be like everybody else in the world, try to have the same amount of money. Do you know that it's okay that you don't have a lot of money? Did you know that? Did you know that it's okay that you don't have to ever get married? Come on, somebody. That God has enough power. He can release his power on the inside of you that you will have a contentment. Who said you had to get married? Who said you had to make a whole bunch of money? Come on, somebody. Who said you had to have an iPhone? <laughs> Who said these things? Who told you that you gotta that, that you have to look a certain way? Who told you? You know, I you know, it's just amazing to me the things that the world tells us. And so we try to hide. I remember for, for a long time that, you know, um, my, my hair grayed when I very early. And so I was like, oh my God, no, it's, oh no, I, I cannot have gray hair. Oh no. <laughs> it out. So I used all these crazy dyes. Over and over and over again. It didn't matter if it was tearing my hair up or not. The world was telling me that that wasn't what I was supposed to have. That it meant I was old. <laughs> Instead of it just meaning that I had gray hair. The world, because the world wraps up our self-esteem, our sense of self-worth in performance and um, appearance. Amen. And so what has happened to us is when life doesn't work out like that, or we say, God, let your will be done, and, and we and God doesn't give us what we think we want, then a lot of times we get angry with God because we're disappointed because we had expectations that were still like the world instead of having a place of peace. So God begins to work with us. He begins to metamorphosize us. He begins to change our thinking. I'm not going to spend that much longer because, but I want to share with you that metamorphosis is ugly. <laughs> the metamorphosis of, of a caterpillar to a butterfly is ugly. And guess what? Spiritually, God dealing with our stubborn thoughts. There's some stuff we, we, we are just determined. No, that is what it's going to be. That's how it is. I don't care what God revealed to me. I don't care. And so God has to deal with a stubborn thinking pattern. Well, I don't know. <laughs> or a stubborn will. And so as a result of that, while we're dealing with that, the enemy is placing thoughts in our mind that God has abandoned us because God won't give us our way. And so we just have dealt with God like he's some kind of punk, you know, like he's some kind of errand boy. Instead of surrendering our will, we want God to surrender his will. Instead of us knowing that we were made for God, we want God to be made for us. So I want to let you know that that metamorphosis, that changing, that renewing of our mind. It can be a painful process because it's going to cause you to have to look at some things that you were doing the world's way and you don't and you don't want to change. Amen. But if we will go ahead and go through the process, then we will have a peace. So we a lot of us, we um, we settle for a piece of peace, <laughs> just a piece of peace. I, every once in a while, when things get so bad. Then we surrender to God. Amen. 
We want a piece of a piece or a small amount of it. But God wants us to know that peace resides on the inside of you. And he wants to rid us of clutter so that we can have a greater manifestation of his peace. So sometimes the reason that I was depressed was simply because God didn't give me what I thought I should have according to the world's definition of success. And so, and some of those same things God still hasn't given me. Or some of the things he did allow me to have, but they didn't even mean what I thought they were going to mean. Because I didn't mean that. When I asked you for that, that's not what I was meaning when I said that. All those types of things. But God gave it to me according to what I needed for me. Amen. So, um, let's just go ahead and I want you to hear the process of a caterpillar turning into that beautiful butterfly. It's ugly. And you might feel like you're in the midst of an ugly process right now. You may not have what you think you should have. You may not be doing what you think you should do. But God wants you to, to bring you to a place of contentment and peace. Amen. That you will embrace your life at every in every season. So you don't have a lot of money that God wants you to embrace that. Amen. And then for you to begin to make some goals with your life and begin to take those goals and bring them to God. But have a erase a pencil and an eraser because the things that you might think that you want to do, God may say, that's not what I have for your life. And you got to erase it. You got to let it, some stuff go. I know that's easier said than done. I just went through a week. This week, I just went through another session for me of letting some stuff go. Because it was even a God idea, but the way that I wanted it to be done, it wasn't working out that way. And I started crying. I had to go through another moment where I had to let some stuff go to release some stuff. And it hurt because I had been holding on to how I wanted stuff to work out. <laughs> I'm holding on to it. But I was able to let it go and say, God, I'm going to trust you. I know it's going to work out together for good. I've seen your work, God. You're a faithful God. And though I don't understand and I don't like it, it's very uncomfortable. And I do not want this. I don't like going through it and it's painful. <laughs> I'm still going to trust you. Amen. And so what happens is during that time period of transition, while we're releasing our will, that's when the devil starts talking and letting us think that God has abandoned us or we're the only ones going through it or he must have a personal vendetta. But this is just life. Amen. And this is how I learned how I had to grow up in how I thought about life. And yeah, you're going to have lots of trials, Benita. You're going to have a lot of situations. God began to show me that when he disrobes us from the flesh or fleshly ways, when he, when he takes us through trials, that he's not, he's trying to disrobe us from those things that are keeping us from him. That nasty attitude, that anger, whatever it is. And he, so he's dealing with it. We don't like it, but we will like the results after it's over. All right. So here it says, I want you to hear here. It says, if you have ever studied the process of the transformation of a caterpillar um, into a butterfly, you will quickly discover that it is not a pretty picture. <laughs> it's not. Um, it's not a picture, pretty picture at all, yet the results are breathtakingly beautiful. Have you seen a butterfly before? How beautiful a butterfly is? The butterfly, go, the caterpillar, which is a, a juvenile or an immature butterfly, goes through a very, very painful stage. More, many butterfly, um, of caterpillars never become butterflies because it is quite a crazy <laughs> process. Let's listen. So here we go. A caterpillar spends most of its life crawling on the ground, right? Consuming food. However, when it's time to become an adult, when it's time to become an adult, when it's time to become an adult, when it's time to put away childish thinking, which equals worldly thinking, that you're going to get your way, that everything's going to work out, A, B, C, one, two, three. That is childish thinking. So when we are ready to move, and God is always trying to pull us into a place of adulthood spiritually. So it says when it's time to become an adult, it says here, 
that most caterpillars find a sheltered, safe spot in which to transform. Amen. It says in, in all caterpillars, this happens inside a protective shell known as a chrysalis. It says here, after wandering for a while, the caterpillar makes a single silk pad on the underside of a branch or twig. So it's even as it is going through this transformation, it's having to go up a um, you know, go up a, a um, tree, but it has to dodge all those feet that might smash it. Have you seen a lot of ca ca caterpillars smash? Have you smashed a caterpillar? Sometimes it just happens. And sometimes some people do it on purpose. But it has to avoid all of that on its way to be processed. Come on, somebody. Listen by the spirit. On its way to be processed, on its way to be transformed, it has to dodge a lot of obstacles. It has to deal with stuff. All right? It says here that um, the cocoon hangs inside until the butterfly is ready to emerge. Now listen to this part right here. And I'll use a certain um, example that I, that I think will kind of help you. It says the transformation that takes place within the cocoon can be compared to what happens to a plastic bottle which has been thrown into the recycle bin. You know how you take a plastic bottle and you throw it in a recycle bin? Well, that's similar to what happens to a caterpillar. It says here, just as a plastic bottle that has been thrown into a recycling bin can be melted down. Woo! Heat, trials, troubles, inconveniences, delays. Just as a plastic bottle that has been thrown into a recycling bin can be melted down and reconfigured into an entirely different shape, that is what happens in the cocoon in the body of a caterpillar. It, the caterpillar is broken down into cells that can become any type of cell. So a caterpillar in that chrysalis, they are broken down, broken down. Like a liquid-like form, broken down. Do you feel broken in your life? And this is when the enemy starts talking to you and telling you that God has abandoned you. Talking to you and telling you that things will never uh, work out. And it depends if we want to have a world-infested mind or the scripture says for us to be not conformed to this world, but to be transformed. God uses trials to break down our will so that he can reform us or reconfigure us into something else. Amen. It says here that the caterpillar is broken down into cells that can become any type of cell. The cells reconfigure together into a new shape. Only a few parts of the body like are basically retained in its original form. The time required for a complete transformation varies from one species to another. So this caterpillar, this caterpillar is taken through a very um, intense uh, process to become a beautiful butterfly. And it's when we are in intense um, situations, trials, things we have to die to our flesh, die to our plans. Come on, somebody. Plans that the world infected us um, with. Some of us, we came up, we're not even pressed about some of this stuff, but the world tells us that I'm, you're not going to feel good about yourself Unless you have this or you're doing this, the world tells you it's no way you can feel good about yourself. See, this is when God begins to show you, okay, so, so you don't have that. Now what? So you just, you don't, you didn't make that. Now what? And this is when the enemy begins to tell us that God has abandoned us. But this is really when God wants us to say to um, him, God, I don't have any confidence in my possessions, my positions, and my relationships. I don't have confidence in them, Lord. They're futile for real. All I have is you. That's where God wants us to be. Amen. And then we begin to get our self worth according to how what God said, he says, you're very good. 
God said that you are somebody. He said that you, he validates you. He didn't say that that has to happen if you have a wedding ring on your finger. He didn't say that that has to happen if you have a fat bank account. He didn't say that that has to happen through, through the money that you have, through the position or the title. He said you have that because Jesus Christ, through his blood, bought that for you, that position. Amen. You're repositioned. But it takes a while for our mind to catch up with what God has done in our spirit. I'll say it again. It takes a while. Some of us live and die never allowing that. And we move into an area of depression. We move into an area of being angry with God. But it isn't until we begin to separate how we are feeling and thinking and move to a place of maturity in how we think. See, there's some things that God wants to give you, but he doesn't want to give it to a child. He doesn't want to give it to someone who's childish. God wants us to grow up. It's amazing. God wants us to go from childish, carnal, world thinking to grow up into being childlike. <laughs> childish and childlike. Are two different things. And while that transformation is going on, the enemy is yapping. The enemy is telling you that you have lost it, that you are nothing, that you're getting too old, that time is going on. You ain't going to never have nothing, you know, and, and the enemy will begin to just torment you. And when we believe it, when we receive that, then he's open to be able to give us more and more. Amen. So when we begin to change our perspective, God, my life is a blank sheet of paper before you. I had all these dreams. I had all these aspirations. I had, you know, and sometimes we don't know until we hit it. Sometimes you hit it. And that's when you find out, wait, hey, I didn't want this to be like this. That's not how I planned it. And I had one of those experiences. We, hey, wait, hey, I didn't plan it like that. Hey, but God has taught me now to let it go. Let it go and trust him. Amen. That he is still God. He's the same God who, who did what he did a way back. He's the same God. He's faithful and true. Amen. And it really isn't about me anyway. Come on, somebody. We, we, are, we, too many of us want to co-star with Jesus <laughs> instead of allowing him to be the superstar. So if he's a superstar in my life, then my life is not, may not look like I necessarily want it, but I got to find a way to be at peace knowing that he is being exalted in this earth. This is all about him. My God, it's all about him. The scripture talks about how, and I'm getting ready to close out. Um, it says here that when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. Listen to that. I reasoned. Well, God, you know, I don't have this. And, well, you know, look at that. And, you know, but our conversations that we're having, we had to say, are these spiritual conversations or are they carnal conversations? A lot of times they're carnal. And we need to just, first of all, be honest. God, I'm just a spoiled brat. <laughs> I want my way. I want my way. I want my way. That needs to be the first place. Let me tell you, the first step of being delivered is being honest. Oh, God. Come on, somebody. The scripture says that God desires truth in the inward part. God, I want my way. I don't want to do it any other way. I had a plan. And you're changing my plan. These are the kind of conversations you need to have with God. And then we have to put a but on it. That's what you do when you begin to turn the corner into maturity. But let that will be done. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Jesus Christ, as we close out for this first part of this teaching, Jesus Christ showed us that he understood. Come on, somebody. He went to God three times and said, this is not the way I want it to be. Come on, somebody. Read your Bible. Come on, y'all. 
in the garden of Gethsemane. He said, look, God, he understands. The scripture says that we have a high priest who we, we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. I'm going to lift. I'm going to bring that scripture up. But Jesus said, let my your will be done. He said, God, I don't want this. I don't want this. And that's exactly we it's our will. Come on, somebody. He definitely did not want it. He, when he said, is there any other way we <laughs> could do this? Have you ever found like that? Is there any other way we can do this? <laughs> he said, God, if you're willing, I'm bringing that scripture up. He said, God, if you're willing, where is it? Let me bring it back up because I had the wrong one. Let me get the other one. He said in Luke, you need to get your Bible and you need to highlight this one and, and you need to put over it. Jesus understands. <laughs> All right. He said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup. I don't want this. Jesus understands when your plans have been completely discombobulated by God. Come on, somebody. When it's not looking the way that you thought it was going to look. When it's not feeling the way you thought it was going to. You in the book. You in his will when that happens to you. Come on, somebody. You're having an encounter with God when you have to, when your will stands up and said, this is not how I wanted it. He said here, if you are willing, take this cup. Have you ever felt like that? I don't want this. I don't want my purpose to include all of this pain. Come on, somebody. I didn't, I didn't want my life. I don't want this time frame that you have for my life. I don't want this. Jesus said, I understand how that feels. I don't want to go through all these changes because I said yes to you, God. Come on, somebody. Jesus said, I understand how that feels. He said here, he said, if you're willing, God, take this cup <laughs> from me. Jesus said that. So he's not, he's not, um, He's not um, 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 rebuking you or angry with you because you're having a struggle with your flesh that your spirit man and the, your, your spirit, I mean, your, your fleshly man and your spirit destiny are conflicting. You in the book. That's normal. <laughs> Jesus. The enemy would have us think that God, I'm sure the enemy was saying stuff to him. But then after that, he had to let it go. He had to let it go. And a part of maturing and a part of separating and a part of understanding and experience a deeper measure of God. See, we always talk about we want more God and we want all these encounters. But this is how, this is what some of the encounters look like. All the encounters that you have with God aren't going to leave you with tears, crying, saying, thank you, Jesus. No, some of them are going to leave you with tears because you're going to be saying, Ooh, <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Come on now. Nobody. Let me help you out. If you are a believer, if you're a real believer, you are not going to get your way all the time. You know, I used to say that to God, you know, hey, when do I ever get my way? But let me finish the scripture. It says here, yet not my will. This is Jesus. That's what God's looking for from you. Yet not my will, but yours be done. It says, then an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. Amen. God wants you to know that there's strength in order for you to relinquish your will. Amen. See, the enemy is going to fight for you to keep your will, to keep, for you to keep tussling and tussling. And all that time, time is going by. Time is going by. And some of us, all we're going to end up with is our opinion. <laughs> You're not going to end, we won't end up with anything being accomplished with God, for God the way he wanted it to be. Amen. 
The scripture says, he said, not my will. Not my will, but allow your will to be done. Amen. Some of us right now, the reason that we are depressed and what will help us really to stay out of depression is when things happen and you say, God, I really don't like this. I really don't want to go through this. But God, not my will, but let your will be done. Amen. And you have to know that as you do that, and we're going to close now, that as you do that, you are becoming the butterfly that God has called you to be. Amen. God has a purpose and a plan. He has a purpose and a plan for your life. But there is pain. There is pain associated with it. Amen. But I want to let you know something. That God loves you. And he wants you to have a good life. Amen. Let's get ready to pray and we're going to close out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just lift up your children before you right now. I lift them up, oh God. Those who you are showing the pathway to come out of depression, Father. I pray that they will emerge more mature believers in you. That they'll settle in their mind that they live in a fallen world. That they'll settle in their mind that the trials do not are not an indication that somehow they've done something wrong. That it's just a part of our lives as the believers. God, I ask you to help them. To surrender as they say Lord not my will but let your will be done I thank you father that you will supply them with the peace the comfort for saying yes to you God I thank you that we will not be Attached to the patterns of this world. This world will not dictate to us what our lives should look like. You are a creative God. You are a God who has the ability to call us in different seasons of our lives. To bless us in different seasons of our lives. God, we will not allow the world to try to constrain us to put you on a deadline. We release it right now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you and I praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. God bless you. I am going to come right back on and I'm going to recite the poem. Amen. A caterpillar with butterfly wings. And we'll be back day after tomorrow for another teaching in this area. I want to help you so that once you emerge from depression, you will never, never, never go back again. In Jesus' name, God bless you.